today on the Mike O'Mara Show. The thing about the general practitioner thing, that's true. But the fact that Rob Ford would slide in as a cast member, that's science fiction. No, so, I said Rob Mayer. Oh, Rob Mayer. I thought you said Rob Ford. No, oh, no Rob not be a Rob good Ford. Tra- Rob Ford hates me. <laughs> no. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> you're reasonably certain you're coming back, right, Rob? What, you mean to this show? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm not sure. Is the airspace over the Capitol is that restricted? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're restricted. Every plane flying into DC, DC has to take this snake-like pattern to land yeah. at the airport. Come on. Yeah. yeah, there should be. I told Pony. I told Pony that it was the Golden Knights. He th- thought it was a category. <laughs> <laughs> All that and more. The Mike O'Mara Show starts now. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. If I lose enough weight, I'm going to shave my uh, beard off. And auction it? Well, this, I, I didn't realize when I went gray in my beard that it would continue to get whiter and whiter to where now I believe my, it's, well, my uh, it's mustache Santa-like. is the mono- it's the Monopoly Man mustache. It's super yeah. white. Yeah. Um, you couldn't like I don't like white. I always, I, I always bet I'm black. Yeah. You couldn't just for men that? I, I, I'm past that. I, I'm too old to do that. They have a new just for men. Do they really? Yeah, that's uh, more like a I'd sh- like to do it red, if I could do it red. Well, uh, the- Like red like Auburn hair or red like Ronald McDonald? Red like, red like fire engine red. That'd be off-putting. I'd, I'd like love to it. Do. Uh, Never it would be fun. look pretty. Yeah. Is, this, uh, is this a diva statement? And this is what I just texted, texted Dan O'Brien. Uh, Celsius, please, it's my energy drink that I would like, that I give him cash for, overpay. Is that why you came in uh, yes. when we were waiting and I waited till you came in and then... I came in when you came in, and then because you saw that I came in, when you came in, you walked out again, and we waited for you again. I didn't even notice, honestly. Yeah, we were Pony and I here. were discussing it yeah. might be a, it might be a thing. No, like that um, brain. so it's been 19 minutes since I texted O'Brien for a couple energy drinks, which I paid right. him hands. I pay like double. That's my that's my tip to this young yeah, man. Celsius are Celsius uh, are yummy. Yeah, I, gave I like them. They're, I gave they're really forty good. bucks yeah, they're yesterday. Metric. Yeah, there's an expe- American version called Fahrenheit that isn't as good. <laughs> I would just like the beverages. That's all. It's been 19 minutes, and I wrote, Celsius, please, happy what face. What kind of personal assistant is he? A terrible one. <laughs> terrible. An impersonal one. Now, A terrible one. Oscar, you, pr- you proposed, you posited the fact that he doesn't look at his phone enough for a boy of his age. Uh, well, uh, since I've known Dan, I have... My usual move, if I'm really in a hurry and I, and I want to be a dick, I will text him and then call him. So you mean he, that's a choice? Yes, it's a choice. Wow. Um, I will text him and then call him. So he what, fe- Oscar being a dick? So it yeah, feels today like- I choose to be a dick. Oh, now I know you're on the mend. <laughs> yeah. Now I, by the way, how are you feeling? I have to ask you how I feel, are you feeling I feel today? really good today. I feel really good today. That's yes, good. Yes, that's good yes. to hear. Uh, I'm excited about that. I was updating my sister on you uh, this morning. And, uh, you know, telling uh, her that, uh, you know, you've got some good information coming in, yeah. positive of a positive nature. Uh, and uh, and she was. Did you settle up the you. bet you made? Did you settle up the bet no. you two made when I was in the hospital? I no. What I did was I told her I'm not coming to Maine because it's one million dollars to uh, get a rental car for three weeks up there. One, One million dollars. Back to you with Dan. I, I just, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Just if we're talking about Rob, just briefly. Uh, well, I still want, it's been 21 minutes. I still don't have a Celsius. Um, the but who's counting? Who's counting? Uh, the you drink that in lieu of coffee, right? Yes, and and this is another thing. No, I've, he drinks it along with. No, coffee. I've asked Dan to stop bringing me coffees, and he always brings me coffee. This is a waste. You know, speaking of liver, yeah, and yeah. Rob can probably tell you this. Probably not a great idea to uh, go with uh, the energy drinks and coffee. Uh, it, how many a day do you think? Right? Maybe not. Not. This not is more than great. like five. I just got back from my GP because I do see my uh, my doctor on a regular basis because I do care about myself. I thought you just called your brother or sister. No, no. I I still have to go back to my general practitioner every three months. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's the what's the word? Oh my my blood pressure is 
Like, they're like, you must have had a great calming day. I'm like, no, this is just me. And it was a terrible day. I have this Bolivian why, Andes. Why, why, it wasn't a terrible day on the show. Not yesterday. Just a bunch of things happened, Mike. You know, I get stressed out easily. No big deal. I know. I know. Sure. Um, That's I'm why high, he chooses to be a dick. I'm high strung. Yes, but, but like the a wonder, racehorse. The wonderful Incan gods have blessed me. <laughs> With a great uh, constitution. With a great constitution. Yeah. I've always, you know, do, you know, seriously, though, if we're talking about that, I think back to, because uh, we have been together a very long time yes. now. Uh, and I remember getting uh, messages from listeners about you and uh, energy drinks. Yeah, it sounds like if you're doing okay. How about you write you about, uh, about? Let's focus on Rob these days. Let's, well, let's Rob's sure been in the spotlight. You, you have been, been in, the spotlight. In, in the spotlight. And I'm talking and, to the listeners. I had I a tough it. conversation with Rob Mary yesterday. I was like, "Hey, man, it looks like Rob the Two Bees is making a comeback. So wave, I gotta wave you off. I'm possibly joining the cast. Wave you off." That was How'd a tough that conversation. Go? He's like, okay. That's that was, you know, dick. that was. That's the most dickish thing he's done yet. No, no. That you is. know, it was pretty good. That was, you see, and it went under the radar. Great idea, but I, though. I, I, oh, it's I a just fine heard about idea. it for the first time. I'm sorry. A fine idea. Uh, <laughs> when he said, I go, when Oscar says, I go to the general practitioner because I care about my health, yeah. that was pretty dickish, too. Right. Yeah, but so, you, you know, said yeah. you, you've, you'd gone. I thought you, you said you'd gone. You just, you wouldn't take yeah. advice from the doctor. Yeah. So I, uh, these are facts. The thing about the general practitioner thing, that's true. But the fact that Rob Ford would slide in as a cast member, that's science fiction. No. So I said Rob Mayer. Oh, Rob Mayer. I thought you said Rob Ford. No. Oh, no, Rob not Mayer be Rob a good Ford. Tra- Rob Ford hates me. <laughs> no. <laughs> he does. <laughs> doesn't he really? I mean, seriously, if he I doesn't was a like betting me, man, does he? Oh, yeah. He hates you. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I'm not a betting man. No, I don't, I don't think know. he hates you. What do you mean? You. I, th- I don't think he likes me that much. Oh, how about he? this? He doesn't hate you, but he doesn't like you. Why doesn't he like me? I think he's, uh, <laughs> I think you were a little too much uh, Devil Wears Prada when you, when you worked with him. Like a little too diva-esque? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't be. recall much that. Much like Dan will that make way. that turn soon enough on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he'll, he'll write a tell-all. I don't know. Who's going to buy that? It's going to be called pamphlet. 23 Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've talked about Rob Ford and the past and all that back in the day. Not probably yeah, he doesn't in the bring last it up five now. years or so. No, we, we haven't but talked you, about you, it. But you, you kiss his ass a little bit. And, oh, Rob uh, Ford you know, is, uh, yes. I mean, he's our number one draft pick. That, see, I, yeah. I I never experienced that, yes. Rob Ford. Yeah, I experienced yeah. he, he grew up a lot. A hookah smoking Rob yeah. Ford on my <clears throat> patio. I remember the. the oh, I forgot Rob about Ford. that. Yes. Yeah, that's my yes. that's my memory. Yes. I I haven't worked with Rob Ford for a long time. I don't know though. Uh, you know, I, that's he's in the a, he's back a, of he's, my mind. He's a full fledged adult now. Yeah, grown up. Yeah, married, no, owns a dog. Grown up, responsible, has his s together. Get yeah. still doesn't like Excuse me. me. I don't think he thinks about you a lot. If I'm if I'm being honest, really, uh, we don't. No, that's that's valid too. He listens you know? to the show, which is which means he supports the program, which I love. Right? Yeah, that's nice. Um, and most people that hate don't listen. Well, that, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't listen if he ha- he if he really yeah. hated me, but he doesn't like me. I don't think he. Th- I, I I don't. I don't know that Rob Ford yeah. likes anybody. I think. Okay, explain that because I'm not. He's the, sort of. He's I sort really, of. A, I I don't think about Rob Ford unless we're talking about him on this show. Oscar, uh, back but, me up if I'm right here. I think he's 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 a very he's a singleton. He likes time by himself, and he's not like a, a chatterbox. He's not like a a terrifically social guy. So while he might not hate everybody, I don't think he goes outward out of his way to to like people. Oh no, I, I disagree. Guy. I completely disagree with you. I, okay. I have I have wonderful conversations with Rob. Maybe it's me too, though. <laughs> <laughs> and he's great with people, and he's why are you know, so nice awesome. to him? Because I, Mike, why are you? Why aren't you as nice to uh, anybody else as you are to him? Like you don't say anything positive about anybody on a regular basis except for Rob Ford. Would that be right, Rob Spiewak? Oh no, he hands out compliments. On this show, it's always Rob Ford, well, no, number Mike, one draft pick. You're, blah, blah, blah. you're great. And meanwhile, it's just like look, what? Look what I'm surrounded with. I've got Rob, who's barely, barely uh, coming back on the program. So that's a pain and a headache personally for me. I got yeah. Pony, who leaves at three o'clock, like uh, Cinderella every day, uploads and, like, the wrong show. and leaves a me- like I. That's my doing, right? I got okay. you, who bitches about everything. So then I'm yeah. here. <laughs> 
What am I supposed to when we celebrate all of that? I think it's fun yeah, for the show, but off air, paying him a butt. Jeez, listen yeah. wow. to him. Yeah, just keep it mm. real. I, I got myself this really... 24 minutes. Thank you. I thought that we were his number one draft picks. No, but I, I guess not. we inherited each other. We built the team together. We don't draft anybody. This is okay. who we are. Okay. So you're not Jerry Buss out there chasing us. No, we're I'm I'm the Latino Jer- I'm the business Mike is F Jerry Boston. Buss. Boston. F Boston. Yes, a Mike is Jerry. Oh, I'm glad Buss. you saw that episode. <laughs> the only show that I'm watching right now that I consider that's my number one draft pick show. Mike, it I is love a that good, show right good. Now. Mike, you are Jerry Boss in this equation. No, because no, here's I'm the, the dynamic. We have to be honest. We have to pull the curtain partner. back. I'm and Jerry Boss's mother. About this. <laughs> there, there are two entities right now. There yes. is the Podville entity where you where Oscar uh, runs the show. And then there is the Mike O'Mara show entity that Oscar is a part of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Rob Ford dynamic has always been interesting to me. But uh, I think that when it comes to comedy, Rob Ford would not be the person who could no, ever but he, slide into Rob Spewak. He can run position. a hell of a board. Oh, but, yeah. but that's not what we would no, need. No, no. And Rob Ford, the, the, honestly. The void that we fill with Rob We can't afford Rob Ford. Comedy. We just can't. Right. Like, he's, but you, he's, you're, he's you're reasonably our... certain you're coming back, right, Rob? What, you mean to this show? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> come on now. The fact that you no, even don't doubt tell it. me to come on now. <laughs> the, the fact that you would even doubt it. How, I'm, da, how could I not doubt it? I'm freaking liver exploded a month ago. Yes, but it's better now. Everything is pointing to better. I'm just, I'm, and I don't mean to lay that on you. You're the one that this applies to more than anybody. You're living it every day, so I'm fine. But I have to be honest. When uh, uh, Oscar knows the conversations that we've had, yes. that really have never involved this. Ever. No, and, and Talking I've never about and, Rob and coming I've never, back. We I've never, haven't. I've never talked to Rob Mayer as Hey on Deck. I was just joking. I've never. Um, but he will be in Arlington. At Arlington that's a brilliant idea, though. Arlington Cinema Draft House this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, I'm working his ass off his stand up. I'm Tommy proud Davidson of Rob Mayer. I, I'm well. very proud of Rob Mayer, who is a naturally funny yeah. guy and gets funny very funny man all the yes. time. Uh, but no, that's it's just it's. Uh, I don't even. know. I think you are probably aware, Rob Spiewak, that. Um, the we have given you uh your space we are not blowing you up with texts no, no. uh or or phone calls because of one reason only and and that is because i think you're dealing with a lot Love of stuff you. that you need to deal with on your own with that said it is just uh uh an enormous weight that a very small fraction of it has to do with professional uh relationships a lot of it has to do with 30 year friendship relationships right. that's just, you know, hanging out there. And uh, I just want desperately uh, closure. I will always yeah. be. You want it. This is, uh, but this is the way I will always be. I will always be angry at whoever this liver guy is, Mr. May, May Day. I yeah. will always yeah. be like, this was back in February, the end of February or the beginning of March when we first began that Odyssey. Also, but everybody, so but everyone has their own path, right? Because even if there was a situation where he could see a doctor sooner, like who are we say or, or pressure Rob into that? That's not that's our his, place yeah, to do that. Yeah, it's his path. No, no. I mean, we did, we did everything within our power. We followed every lead, and this is this is where we got. It's May tenth, I think. But it is that when you talk about wanting closure. I mean, as close. I'm getting a lot of latency. Like, pony on Rob, are you? Uh, uh, the, what's going on? Rob had a quick blip there. Yeah. Blip. Okay. All right. Very good. Blip. Right. Go oh, should I add that to my GP list? No. You're I good. think we ought to have Rob disconnect and reconnect. Yeah. To be honest, sure. With you. I think sure, we you can need do, that. To do that. All right. Uh, blip, disconnect Rob. and reconnect, Rob. Speak back. Uh, blip. Blop. So. Okay. Uh, getting back to Rob. Rob getting back to Rob, Rob Ford. Oh, I'm sorry. Rob I've always had a little sliver. You got to disconnect and reconnect, Rob. I, I, I am. I, his video is like fine. Video, his audio. audio, everything. That's what I'd like you to do yeah. if you can do that. I kill, can kill do video, video as well. I'd like kill you to sure. do it now. Remove him and then bring him back. If that's possible. He is. It He's is. doing it. Thank you. Jeez. We're back, baby. Uh, all right. So getting back to the whole Rob Ford. Always, uh, and, and I do, it's so minor that I mm-hmm. hardly think about it, but I have to mention it when you bring it up. Always I've had that little pang 
of jealousy when you refer to uh, Rob Ford as uh, you know, like you do so so glowingly and positively, yep. uh, because it, you know it, I just remember back in the day uh, a somewhat pet- petulant lad, yes, who was very very sensitive. When did that flip? When did that change? Uh, occur. There were lots of times when he would get yeah, yeah, like angry. I, I, I remember. Uh, that. I understand. I just right. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking out of my no, ass. No, here, right? no, R- Rob. Okay, this is no slight or or knock towards our little crew here. Our little crew here is exclusive. It's and this includes Rob Spiewak and 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 Matt Bloom. Uh, we're a little family, and I th- and I believe. That at times, even to myself, it's a detriment to each other because we put up with a lot of S that most people wouldn't. Okay. Once right, okay. Rob Ford was pulled out of this little ecosystem, I got to manage Rob Ford the way I know how to manage. Okay. And then also, in fairness, I, I, I feel somewhat I was able to help him and, and honestly empower him to become a true okay. professional. Oh, that's so insulting. Rob, are you hearing this? I have every word, yes. It is so insulting when he throws that that last part, become a true professional, unlike anybody he works with on this show. I mean, two days ago, we had our executive producer upload the wrong show. (laughs) Yes, well, it would be fair. It was was a great episode. It was a great episode. 13 years. And like a child. He uploads the wrong file. <laughs> and do I blow my stack? No. And the only the only time we become aware of it is when the listeners hit us. Oh, yeah. He doesn't tell us. He didn't even know. <laughs> you didn't know. Right, Pony? Well, no. I mean, there, there were a lot of things going on here. But again, this that was my Somebody fault. Somebody came in and flipped not what, does to, what does that mean? There what does was that a, mean? There were a lot of... Um, Tech support requests here at the village after yeah. I uploaded that episode. It, 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 did you this get a tech entirely support? My fault. Did you get a tech support request that said, "Please upload the right show"? No, <laughs> that was the problem. Uh, this is really deep, but I have to ask this question. A deep cut. All right. So yes. what I'm hearing when you say that, Pony, is yes. that you perhaps are failing to prioritize this program. It was it was more along the lines of um, I, I was in a hurry and you know what you, you're right you're right I should have put more uh, priority towards this show and I should have just which is put- what I what I've told you every time at every moment that nobody comes before TMOS I believe when this that happens. I mm-hmm. believe that one hundred percent I believe that the the way everything is structured mm-hmm. that even though. Uh, as far as the business side of things, uh, Podville Media yeah. is a, it's uh, a, a a a you know a solid performer. Yeah. Unlike it was at the very beginning, it is now a big part of Oscar's life, Correct. if yes. not a bigger part of our Oscar's life, cons- hours wise uh, than this show. But Oscar has always maintained the priority of being Correct. here and doing the show. That's why so, when I came back, like I I remember because a listener texted me. Thank you, by the way. Um, but listeners text me when uh, we've got the wrong streaming file up, and we've got there's like a zillion things that happen that you never, never right. we have a hear watchdog, about. Which uh, the listeners of this program, yeah, yeah, that, which that, yeah, it's just, like so that. it's a family. Um, I, uh, so it's not a big deal, but I, maybe, maybe because you haven't seen that side of Rob Ford, Mike, and you remember this young intern with with a uh, hookah. That is it. And yeah, I am to be honest with you, yes. I haven't any contact. Yeah, with yeah him he since hasn't he been won. around for the maturing of it. Yeah, yeah. So you get it's to like see when you see a level. friend after three years and their kid that was an infant is now like a functioning person. Yes. It's always a jump because you didn't get to see that transition. The parents don't see that. Well, the outsiders I, I, see look, that. then I'm enlightened about that and yeah. I'm glad to hear that. But screw him. I don't need to talk to him if he doesn't like me. <laughs> uh, that's the way. What about the, the Rob Mayer prospect? I thought that that uh, intrigued you. I uh, it's first I've heard of it was today. First uh, I came up w- with it when I asked time. Rob if he's coming back. He said, "I think so. Yeah. I think it's probably something we have to prepare for." <laughs> I mean, the ramps and things are ready. No, What's of that? course I'm coming. All the ramps have been installed and everything, right? 
<laughs> you're you're fine, but you're still talking a little bit like that. Yeah, <laughs> like my body, you know, which worries me, that um, scares me. You know that that that's what freaks me out. Little things freak me. Can you still but get May disability 10th. if you do a podcast but don't work? It's, it's considered work, right? How does that work? Well, well, I I don't know. I don't understand the question. Well, we, yesterday we said you were the poster child for uh, uh, dis- government disability. Um, so right. I don't know what the it, you 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 would still do the podcast over receiving disability. I guess I'm asking you. Oh yeah, of yeah, course. Okay. As long yeah. as you, as long as this is still your first love. Yes, and this not, is the best and not part of my Columbo day. Columbo reruns. Each day. I'm done with uh, Columbo. And you said today you feel better than you uh, have felt. This is your best. Yeah, day I feel so far. I feel good. I feel really okay. good today. I've got right. some good. errands good, good, to good. do and and things to get done. And I uh, had positive uh, interaction with my doctor yesterday, and excited to move on. I get to see. What him. is the hardest thing for you right now? What is the toughest thing for you? The hardest thing for me right now is the fact that when I think I'm doing a hundred percent, and if I do something. For like 10 or 15 minutes, I'm toast all of a sudden. Just got to sit down. Well, air squats are hard for everyone. Like, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Tough for well, me as well. I, that was on a problem. The kip-ups are what are getting. <laughs> what are air squats? The squats you do without weight? Yes, I'll show you. It's literally this. That's not easy. I'll be doing those today. That's not. I hate those. Yeah. I, I truly, <laughs> truly hate those. <laughs> And then I did uh, I did them with the uh, twenty pound weights in each hand, and I hated oh. those even more. Oh, that's I got like that hell. to look forward to at one o'clock this afternoon. Uh, yes. And it's wait till you try like, kip ups. Uh, what are kip ups? It's that break dancing move where you just like fling. You're your, laying on you're yeah. laying on your back, and you use a leg thrust to end up standing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Oh, that'll happen. <laughs> he told me, the trainer told me to get on the floor. Yes. Not I, I, You weren't here, <laughs> I think, when say, I talked about... So we're done? I, I said, fall, <laughs> well, when I fell off the weight bench, I literally fell off the weight bench. I <laughs> fell off it. I was doing two 20-pound presses mm-hmm. like this, and, uh, and I fell off. <laughs> I fell off. And then the process of me getting up involves finding something to grab to hoist myself up you know and then i and then i got him laughing he almost couldn't continue (laughs) he couldn't continue the training session when i said i've fallen and i can't get up and then he started laughing uh because you know comedy is my life uh, uh-huh. But I'll be there uh, oh, today. God. And by Oscar the way, will the never upper understand. Body, yeah, uh, the, I, at our age, Mike, when we get on the floor, it's not good. I was, there's well, never well, a no, good reason to be age, on the floor. It's our weight. There are yeah. guys that are seventy that I play golf with that are fit as a fiddle, can get down and squat and look at their putts and do that. I'm not in that category. I will tell you this: that as far as the upper body, uh, the, the whole analysis, I got them on a machine, Rob. Okay. Where I put my feet on these little metal things, and I held, I held my hand on these little metal things, and it looked like a scale with two metal sticks coming out of it that analyzed my body. And what so I so they're discovered, like electrodes. They run. They're power like electrode your body. things, okay. you know. And what I discovered was my legs are weak as kittens, and <laughs> nothing. And that is completely true because when I did my upper body workout, I had no after effects, a tiny bit of soreness, but nothing to speak of. The legs, two days after the workout, I was just like, help me. Yeah, but don't you do a lot, of, a lot of like walking with, for it golf and all it's, that? It, it's proven to me that it's utterly and totally irrelevant to muscle tone in uh, in the legs. My legs are, uh, why are you chuckling? Shut I keep up, on you. looking for the right SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> gift <laughs> to <laughs> send you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one of him working out. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's in a pineapple under the sea? Let me butt my eyelid. When I'm talking about there's some reason I don't want to look like that. There you go. Little, That's little a little tiny better. legs, exactly. <laughs> so, but huge yeah. upper body. No, yeah. I mean, it was really a shocker to me because obviously when I had this hip surgery, it took me a while to bounce back. And now that it's uh, the, the, the way it is. So you, as I was saying to my sister also today, as she chuckled, when yes. I was talking about you, and then I mentioned that Oscar's, uh, you know, kind of modifying his rap a little bit as far as what he does yeah. physically and dietetically, and I'm doing the same thing. She said, "So Rob is kind of motivated." Yeah, he has. I don't know what Pony's doing. Uh, you know, maybe cutting down on the. Mar- 
Uh, Pony, last just so night we know. He, uh, he he cooked mm-hmm. the wrong dinner by accident. It was great. How many martinis do you have a night? Uh, maybe one or like half of one. Have you cut down from your three or That's four fine. that we yeah, would joke about? Bit. A little bit. What's a little Is bit? Is it a 15-ounce martini? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm, I would say I'm not having as much as I used to. I right. don't know the exact amount, but I, I think- But uh, you've never, you never did like four or five a night? No, no, I was never right. at that level. Just How, yeah. If we're talking gallon-wise, you're not at the gallon level of- um, Gin. Drink, drink, and gin. It would right? be a handle, which is a, a handle. Half I'm gallon. sorry. I don't yeah, know I'd say a handle probably lasts me like three weeks, like two and okay. a half to three weeks. So not a, necessarily healthy for a man your size. I mean, it's not it's healthy not, to drink at not, all, but lightweight. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> and by the way, I should also point out with this new health uh, kick that Rob has motivated all of us because Rob's getting healthy, and yeah. we all want to get healthier. Uh, look at him; he's the hot chick. Look, look at that face. Look at, him, Look at him. He's pinned out in his face. Like, I have to also point out, I had about 150 mimosas on Easter. That's okay. You know, that's yeah. fine, Mike. It's the kind the, uh, of where it's just like, by the end, of, you know, it's just a slight orange hue to the uh, bubbly. Oh, like when uh, you used you know. to, uh, when you use what you called on a flight, a tomato martini? That's what, what, what when I would fly across the country, I said, I'd like a tomato martini. And I used to judge the flight attendants on their perception of that request. Yes. And there were the old school ones sort that, of a got Bloody it, Mary. Uh, that got it immediately, and uh, the other ones would go, what? Eh, uh-huh, eh. huh, well. I said, that's just uh, bring me the vodka and the, uh, and the you know, tomato juice. And, but you know, by the way, and Bloody Marys were, you know, this would be flying across the country with an early yes. morning flight and kind of based on being a phobic flyer as uh, as well. We you know. we did Rob, that a lot. <clears throat> One little can of Mr. and Mrs. T's Bloody Mary mix would last him 5,000 miles. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, just keep the vodka coming. Anyway, yes, uh, we've all modified. In that we we have. Yes. And then, you know, we always have to take tr- tr- take a negative and turn it to a positive. God willing, Rob, we get some yes. good news in May. And let's say we do get some good news in May as right. a family here. Uh, I, I think that think sets the tone not for a gemstone themed live show in Las Vegas <laughs> where Rob is our miracle. Yeah. Oh, I I can see the set already where we decorate it with like wings and yeah, crosses. Yeah. 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 And then can have we Rob hire come muscle out men? Like a, and you come out in a rope. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Oh, no, like, like a, like not, a, a, like a, stands, not, not a toga robe, but one of those Jesus robes. He you know, stands, yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, out I'll of throw my beard out of Old timey wheelchair. He stands once you touch him. Exactly. Ooh, like this, a faith healer. Yeah. You're a faith yeah. healer, a comedy healer. <laughs> Rob Spiewak live from Las Vegas. <laughs> I love that. Fantastic. We can do that. Absolutely. I like the wheelchair uh, part. Uh, by the way, <laughs> Rob gets healthy. Uh, you know, he gets a good report in May. Uh, we immediately make the plans. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I've I already started time. with the team. I think it's time. I think it's back to our normal yes. time out. Yes. There. Yes. I think that's great. Uh, even though I don't like the, I love the theater, but I don't like the theater. I love deep theaters. I don't like narrow theaters, but uh, that's okay, you know. Could we get a ballroom at the park, uh, you know, thing? Could, could we do it that way at all? Or uh, I think we've Zappos got great partners Zappos. with Zappos. Okay, thank yeah. you. Anyway, I'm thinking out loud. I'm <laughs> yes. all over the place today. Look at him. <laughs> what are you doing here? I'm sorry. I'm I didn't mean job to harder. Mike, I, I, I just I'm want sorry. you to know I think yeah. we have a great partnership. With great Zappos. partnership. <laughs> it's a great <laughs> partnership. All right. Uh, really uh, okay, hold on. Let me, uh, let, let me just go ahead and uh, downtown Grand... Room, two twin beds. Thank you very much. I uh, just did that. Wow. All right. yeah, there we go. Uh, One so, of those is a day bed. Uh, <laughs> one more time, because I and I don't want to do it every time we have you on the show. And you're going right. to be joining us tomorrow for the entire bonus show. Uh, exactly. So I'm going to just get this out of my, my way. For the listeners that might be hearing your voice for the first time because you've been uh, out more than you've been in, Right. Uh, give them a an update, and for everybody else, where you stand right now, health wise, what you think mm-hmm. you where you think you are, where the prognosis is, where everything is. Right now, um, basically, there was two issues that they were concerned were. about. There were two issues that they were concerned about when I went in: uh, cirrhosis, which is scarring of the liver, mm. and diabetes. Uh, right now. 
the uh, with the weight loss and the improved diet, my diabetes is nearing control with uh, a little bit of needle action. And my doctor feels that if I continue down this path within a year, I might even be able to be needle free without the, uh, you know, and, and continue to be okay as far as uh, the diabetes goes. So that's the eating has really helped. Very that. impressive. Um, and then as far as the liver, uh, I go in on, I believe, May 10th to GW for uh, an actual liver specialist to look me over, try to figure out what damage has been done precisely and what needs to be done to move on from here. But as far as blood work goes, you can get sort of a barometer of it based on two different panels that they can run from your blood. And both panels have shown marked improvement since I went into the hospital on March 16th. So that's that the is, best. And that's the best news all, of all, this of all. entire journey, yeah. right? Uh, yes, because that is indicative of some liver function, um, improved body function overall. Uh, there is. And when a, you say some, and I'm, I'm just getting into the weeds here please. with this. Yeah. When you say some liver function, right. Uh, that's the difference between someone. You can get people that are in a condition where they've done the damage where there is no right. Uh, that's that's can when you, you still start... survive without any liver function at all? Or no, no. Then you would be in the transplant mode. Yeah, if and you, they if you just got kind of time for the upgrade. But, but, but your but liver also, is still functioning uh, to some degree. I mean, my symptoms are continuing to be. I have good facial color, no yellowing of the eyes or anything. None of the classic liver symptoms of shutdown. Okay. Uh, also, uh, just as a quick sidelight, uh, because of internal bleeding based on the liver, uh, which is what sent me to the hospital in the first place, I was very anemic, almost to trans, uh, transfusion mode, just missed it by seriously one-tenth of a percentage. You, had a, few, it you had a few transfusions. Uh, I'm talking to Carrie, I remember. What's that? You had a few blood transfusions. No, I had blood. I took units of blood, yes. but not a total transfusion. Not a total transfusion. A yes. total transfusion, which is a bigger a bigger uh, uh, situation to be a part of. I have noticed, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, your color compared oh, to when you first joined us. Oh, my us, God. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Dramatically different. Well, that yes. has to do with being low on, literally yeah. low on blood. That's why I was calling okay. you powder. I was like, there's yeah. no way that you look like a human being again. Like, you so look they're, healthier. They're, the body produces blood at a very slow level. Like, if you were supremely anemic and everything was perfect, it would still take four weeks for your body to get into the normal zone. Wow. I'm not in the normal zone yet. And there's a little bit of an issue with iron that might be a genetic thing that can definitely be controlled. They just need to to pinpoint it. So and you were on the phone with your doctor yesterday as well, correct? Texted with my doctor back and forth. What, and what forth, was that about? Uh, uh, just the fact that uh, I will be doing some blood work next week and I get to see him a week from today to see if the trends are continuing in the right direction. And okay. frankly, uh, since this whole thing has begun, this is the first appointment that I, I don't want to get happy, but I'm eager to do it because if the trends continue Because of the way, the way you're feeling. Yeah, and the, if their trends are continuing the way they were, there's a chance for good news. That's all I'm going to say. We're there's moving in, uh, in the right direction. And people are pulling... My, uh, you should know, Rob, <clears throat> all jokes aside, I was on the, a call with uh, my friend Michael Corleone from yeah. Scottsdale, and he's like, I've been listening to the show, like, how are you holding up? You guys are dropping like flies. <clears throat> and I was like... Because, <laughs> you know, we're friends, and he's just breaking my balls. He's like, seriously, how's Rob doing? And I was like, well, look, he's so much better today than we ever dreamt of four four weeks ago and and you, you uh your family you're not just like a brother or a cork your family is with all due and yeah. i'm not trying to make it about me no. i'm not i'm no. just trying to give people perspective where uh this occupies my name my mind uh from the time i wake up in the morning until the time i yeah. go bed at night uh, go to bed at night i'm thinking about it all the time there's a couple of things at, at, at work rob and i have uh, uh been together for three decades Three decades, 30 years. We yeah. have been together 30 for, 30 for 30 years. Secondly, uh, with all the crap that we've given Rob over the years about uh, guests or whatever and yeah. all that uh, back and forth, the, uh, the one thing that uh, I have become acutely aware of uh, since he's been gone is the, uh, the, humor in, the, the humor part of the show, what, what yeah. the funny that Rob brings to this show which is just 
It's not the same. I take it for granted. It's not, I yeah, take it's not the same. I've taken it completely. It could be for the granted. same with Rob Mayer, but not the same without you. Well, it different never, flavor. It never would. Uh, but the thing about Rob Mayer, you are such a bastard. It's so funny. I just that's the. I didn't know I missed it until it was gone. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not. Where, the, it's where, not. Where, the, it really isn't it. the same. Really that is not same. to say because I need to say this about you with the way you are. That is not to say anything will change. We will still hold your feet to the fire. God, I hope we will so. Still. Uh, but it's just, uh, as a friend, it's been quite the journey and quite the 2022. And, uh, you know, I like the fact that you've got the, uh, it sounds like your doctor's on it, really proactive about getting this stuff that he's now, you know, uh, you know, he might even feel that way as your personal physician. Well, he, maybe he optimistic. kicked you in the ass a little earlier. It wouldn't have well, been one of the, to this point. And I, I've this just, I'll say this briefly. I met him before he was a doctor. He was a nurse for Robert when he was studying to become right. a doctor. And we had a lot of late night conversations. And I said, when you get your degree, I want you to be my doctor. So we've been through a lot together. And okay. after our first face to face after this, when I was expecting, you know, all bad news and to get yelled at, he said to me, you know, let's just focus on the future and fixing this. You and I have been through too much together to let this go. And I just let me know that he was, you know, he's invested in this situation. And it's it feels really, really good to have an ally like that. Last question before we break, because we've got the uh, news coming up here. But I yeah. have to say, um when you're in this situation, and I feel comfortable enough to ask you this question now because it's always been on my mind. Uh, I would imagine that if I was in a situation like this, that going to the doctor would be a very, very scary proposition because you're almost afraid to ask certain questions. Because oh, the you're first not sure visit, what the, the first visit, especially with the guy that was the lousy doctor that I needed to get in right away just so I could get yeah. some blood work done. That was, that was a backbreaker as far as morale. And yeah. then there Terrifying, was, I would imagine. Oh, there was, and there was also amazing trepidation to the first visit to my doctor, but he put me at ease. Um, and it's not as, it's not as horrifying anymore. Uh, will I be horrified? and worried and out of my mind and not sleep the night before I go into GW to have my liver God looked at. You, of course. There, buddy. Of God course I will. It's and that's yeah. something, you know, you talk about day up uh, sun up to sundown. I don't go 10 minutes without thinking about what is coming up. If I had an answer of this is the game plan when the, the only thing I can compare it to is this is when Robert was diagnosed with leukemia when he was just about three years old, and they finalized the, the diagnosis, they handed us a binder that looked like a phone book. It was like that thick. And I said, what's that? They said, that's his playbook. This is what we're going to do for the next three years, and this is what's going to cure yeah. him. And they stuck to it. Now, that's an ever-changing thing. A guy who was diagnosed two weeks later actually had a different playbook because the technology was changing that rapidly. Mm -hmm. I don't need a playbook. I just want to know what I've done to myself, mm -hmm. um, the extent of it, what needs to be done to correct it, what changes I need to continue to make or you've done uh, a lot of the heavy lifting. I have, but I need to, if I need to expand yeah. on it, I will, but we I want just, to know if the basement's flooded or it's a full restoration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got no roof at all. Yeah. Uh, but I just, I want to know where I'm at and the notion that I'm still having to wait a few weeks to get to, into this guy. Originally he looked at my chart and he said, it's not necessary to get you in before now, which was perhaps stupidly optimistic, thinking, okay, maybe we're not in total crisis mode. But still, it was enough that I spent five days in the hospital. I want to know. I just yeah. want to know where I'm at. And right. that's, that's probably when you talk about the hardest thing, and I talked about the, the, the lack of stamina, the overlying sort of black cloud of not knowing that's probably the worst because you can't shake that. 
beautifully uh, articulated, yeah. Rob. I, I think we get it. Also, and, uh, a quick know, note that's, on that that's wonderful. That. Thank you for sharing. I think you're you're helping so many families and people. I've gotten oh, so absolutely. many great notes yep. and emails and got everybody. We can all if you are in a situation, do it, man. Yeah. You can do this. You can mm-hmm. do this. Also, uh, I don't want to be crass, but also an important note that this is why these fruitcake sales are so important. Because you never know if you're going to get another batch. You just don't. Thank you. We have, Pony, we have to thank you. What in the hell is the matter with you? Uh, boy, we're going to... I want to sell four times as many this year. <laughs> I want to charge triple. You uh, got to stay anyway. alive so we can get another batch. Well, the fruitcakes are mostly just the coping. Your insurance will cover the rest. <laughs> hey, man, is that Omero Rock? Yeah, man. Well, turn it up, man. KTEL Records presents 16 original hits inspired by the Mike O'Mara Show in one far-out collection. It's O'Mara Rock. This groovy collection covers everything TMOS. There are songs about legendary P1 listeners. Hit songs about the TMOS wives. And songs about all the things TMOS listeners love. You can get on the TMOS Hit Parade by becoming a TMOS Talking Head. Send your email to Rob with two B's at MikeOmeraShow.com and include your name and phone number and explain all about your wild, wild life. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Uh, we've told you about Cornerstone and how they can negotiate through this uh, wonderful world of mortgage rates, uh, which have now hit 5% for the first time in a decade. Ooh. And that's going to be the new floor, so they're going to go up. Uh, what does it mean for you? Well, it means that if you're purchasing a new home or you're looking to consolidate debt, it's more important than ever to work with a team that you can trust. They deal with this every day. They know how to deal with it. I've dealt with them twice with a mortgage. My current mortgage was a uh, was a cornerstone mortgage. I love them. I think they're trustworthy. They're good people. And uh, limited supply and high demand dictates that you work with a company you can absolutely uh, make sure are the best prospects to a potential seller. And uh, that's what Mark and his team can do for you. No two scenarios are the same. You need a company that will get down to the nitty gritty of your specific situation, whether it's a purchase or it's a refinance. Plus, with their no obligation rate quote, AAA rating with the Better Business Bureau and 100% satisfaction guarantee, why would you call anyone else? Answer me that. Answer me! Answer me! Uh, Whether a purchase or a refinance, call Cornerstone First Financial, the number one choice of TMOS and all of our listeners, 202-625-1221. That's 202-625-1221 or cornerstonefirst.com. Thank you, Cornerstone First Financial. From the four corners of the World Wide Web and into your digital device, it's what you need to know. This is the homepage. This is the homepage, people. Looky here, I just got this text that rolled in. Okay. How's that for a handsome kid? Aww, Look at him. That's sweet. Look at him. How tall that's is he? That's my boy man? Robert. Uh, Eight feet. He, yeah, he's. A, I think he is closing in on 6'5". Oh, Hi, Dad. Yeah. Hi, Daddy. Yeah. Uh, hur, 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 hur. Well, you know, he's got a cousin who is 6'7". So yeah. Did not know that. The mm. tall Spiewax, yeah. By the way, uh, watching the Little League games, I got my little guy who's going to be, uh, I think he's going to be not a Redwood, but he's definitely going to be well over six feet. Which is pretty cool for me. I love the idea That's of having awesome. a taller son. That's uh, super, super cool. Uh, yesterday in your neck of the woods, boys, the U.S. Capitol was briefly evacuated uh, when a plane was misidentified as a probable threat. Mm. This was actually, thing is so bad. This, this is, is so, so stupid. This is when, look, you come to Washington, D.C., You have the park police. You have the Capitol police. You have the Metropolitan police. You have the Secret Service. You have the uh, the Horsey police. You have every. It's just ridiculous how many police (laughs) forces. uh, The Horsey police. The the planes (laughs) flying over the United States Capitol was a plane filled with uh, Army parachuters who were doing a demonstration at the Nationals game. Yeah. Come on. What do they make assumptions? Is that what they do? There's no protocol for this crap. I'm not sure. Is the airspace over the Capitol? Is that restricted? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> they're restricted. Every plane flying into DC, DCS, take this snake-like pattern to land yeah. at the airport. Come on. Yeah. yeah, there should be. I told Pony. I told Pony that it was the Golden Knights. He th- thought it was a category. <laughs> <laughs> I dubbed thee. <laughs> 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 there, uh, there's. Sh- 
we're I am shocked that this plan didn't just get shot down. Me too. Because that's what I mean. There's all these countermeasures in the city for this. Yeah, so you got people drinking beers, eating pretzels, and hey, look at the parachuters. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're evacuating the United States. Capitol. Also, in the middle of a global, uh, like let's just say, the theater of war is in Europe, but it is top of mind. Maybe let's not do the Golden Knights and, in the yeah, capital. And, and Maybe also not. the uh, the poor people at the capital that are still barely getting over the insurrection. Right, they get. Everybody, don't even check in. Just go into the streets. They were interviewing uh, slack-jawed tourists this morning about what happened. And they were saying, I don't know. Sound like a fire alarm over at the Capitol. I don't know what happened. (laughs) Well, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the failure to notify Capitol Police of the flyover was outrageous and inexcusable. The military uh, clearly knew what was going on, so at least someone was aware so yeah. somebody knew they I can, just uh, i can get an uber yeah. in three minutes in the city right? yeah without talking to anyone exactly there should be it's, a mechanism in place for this i mm. hope they they do this uh, yeah but you can't parachute is... out of an uber <laughs> nah, that's, where's the fun <laughs> it's of too that low. how great is that uh <laughs> celebrities have more children uh than the average nationwide certain celebrities do the nationwide average for ch- for kids is two in the yeah. nuclear family Here are some famous folks and some numbers. Alec and Hilaria Baldwin, they have six kids together and number seven on the way. Elon Musk, he has fathered eight children. Did you know that? Did you know that he was a uh, a breeder? Wow. Uh, Unfortunately, one has passed away. They range from four months to 18 years old. I don't think he was that old. Uh, He has a set of twins and a set of triplets with his first wife and a son and daughter with his ex-girlfriend. Man just uh, likes to spread his... Musky seed. Well, when you're a billionaire, you can just scream out, don't worry, I'll pay for it. Well, yeah, but a billionaire doesn't make you have triplets. Weird. Weird. Angelina Weird. Jolie and Brad Pitt, uh, six children, uh, ranging from 13 to 20. Uh, most of them, I believe, adopted. Uh, three were adopted, three are bi- biological. So there we are. Uh, Kevin Costner, he has seven kids that range from 11 to 38. Wow. Wow. Yeah. The oldest uh, one played the guy that <laughs> peed in his pants and dances with wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I've just <laughs> my pants and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> That's the oldest one. The first three were uh, with his ex-wife. Then he later had one with a girlfriend and then three more with his current wife. Clint Eastwood, eight kids, uh, different relationships, yes. 25 to 68. Mm-hmm. He has a 68-year-old kid? Yeah, well, Clint's like 90, isn't he? Almost 90. Yeah. Uh, Mick Jagger, eight kids from different women. They range uh, from five to 51. Mel Gibson has... Mel Gibson, by the way, who I saw in an interview. Wow. Way out I there don't now? Know what's go- oh, I don't know what's going on there. He has nine kids, five to 42. Madonna has six. Four are adopted. They range from nine years old to 25. Eddie Murphy... 10 kids. Mm. I knew this, range, yeah. Ranging from 2 years old to 32. And Chris uh, Jenner has 6 kids. And you can name them all, of course, because it's uh, yeah. the yeah. Kardashians. So yeah. there we are. There's that. Thank you. I have two. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, I have three. Yes. <laughs> you win. Oscar? Not uh, 0. 0.0. You got dog. Yeah. Oh, very good. Fur uh, baby. All right. Stop it. Turn. Stop it. Hey. Turn the, turn the crickets off. Thank you. Mike, that's the sound of Clint Eastwood's youngest child. Christopher Walken is over in the UK. He's doing a TV series called The Outlaws, and during a day off, he went to visit uh, Stonehenge. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny right there. That I is. can leave the story right there. Uh, so uh, his co-star, Stephen Merchant, took him to Stonehenge. Christopher asked a woman if he could touch the stones. I, I wonder over there, can I touch the stones? Uh, she told him no. So Stephen took the woman aside and said he's 78 years old. He's an Academy Award winner. He's Christopher effing Walken. He's come 3,000 miles. Uh, These things have been here for 5,000 years. Can he just touch the stone? She still said no. Mm. Stephen says, quote, it was so typically British that uh, even somebody like Christopher Walken uh, can't touch the stones. Uh, that's not how we roll. Uh, that's how we roll in England. So he was pissed. I thought uh, I didn't know there was that they would limit that. It's granite. 
Didn't Chevy Chase knock them over in one of the Lampoon movies? <laughs> yes, uh, National Lampoon's European Vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Put a velvet rope around them. I just want to touch the stones, please. <laughs> Let me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the website Thrillist has released the results of their third annual Fasties. Oscar, this one's for you. The Fast Food Awards. Uh, it's their completely serious celebration of the greatest food served in grease-stained paper bags. Fifteen categories. Here are the top three finishers in each. Okay. Wow. All right. Most valuable pickle. Ooh. Uh, that's Burger King's chicken, which I thought was the foulest sandwich the I've worst. ever eaten. The yeah. uh, worst. Absolutely horrible. I already do not like three this Three bites list. in, I was out. Uh, menu item of the year, Taco Bell's crispy chicken sandwich taco. Oh, that's wonderful. You can't okay. go wrong. Well, you can order anything off the Taco Bell menu and you'll be happy. Best casual fries. Five Guys style fries. I think you'll back that up, Rob. Uh, I don't know, Mike. These fries are just a little too casual for me. Would it kill them to put on a tie? Sport jacket. Uh, the best fast casual fried chicken sandwiches. We got them all down here. Zaxby's signature sandwich. Yes. Zaxby's. There's one in Manassas. Re you've you've mm -hmm. sampled Zaxby's? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> of course there is. They have a fast uh, food restaurant in Manassas? <laughs> best fast casual cheeseburgers. Shake Shack. I've never been to a Shake Shack. You uh, have once. On the way the, back from uh, Florida, we went once. Yeah. To the Shake Shack? Yep. Mm -hmm. There's one uh, around the their, corner here. National national brand now. It's their Shack it Burger good. single. Best onion rings, Sonic. Best fries, Arby's Curly Fries. And I limit myself to the cur I don't eat the curly fries. <laughs> Best chicken nuggets, Arby's again. Hey, Haven't Arby's. Had em. Haven't had them. Premium What's chicken nuggets. Bert Streeter. Ken Beatrice. Yeah, and you're... Bernie Streeter treats his employees with a <laughs> dignity that they pass along to you, the customer. Uh, thank you, Ken, up in heaven. Uh, best tacos, Del Tacos, the Del Taco. Yes. Stable. That is a uh, California chain. I think they're around the country now. Uh, let's see. Moving right along. Fish sandwich, Popeye's classic flounder fish sandwich. <laughs> Never had gross, it. But Proud it. to say. Uh, <laughs> Gotta be best good. Best spicy chicken sandwiches, Popeye's. Go spicy away. chicken. Uh, best fried chicken sandwiches, Burger King's Kaching. No, no, that's horrible. No. You're, no. you're uh, mm. best fried. How many fried chicken sandwiches are there? Uh, let's see. Not enough. The best cheeseburger, Culver's Double Butter Burger with cheese. I didn't know Culver. I thought it was an ice cream joint. Uh, it is, but they have butter burgers. Mm. Yes. It it what sounds, better way to clog your sounds, arteries than dipping the beef in butter? It sounds good for it. you. Uh, <laughs> best coffees. Uh, Culver's Blue Spoon Blend and the best breakfast, Wendy's. I've never enjoyed that. I've breakfast never done Wendy's. a Wendy's breakfast. Well, now we have to. Yeah. Yes. So there's uh, that. And for all of those foods, uh, congratulations. Yeah. But no spicy uh, chicken nuggets. I'm no shocked. spicy chicken nuggets. It's from not McDonald's. there. It doesn't exist. Mm. Now, a little something, something. A Brazilian chef uh, oh, says her income has doubled since she started sharing nude cooking content on OnlyFans. Her name. Candida Batista. She's 40 years old. She said that she's now fielding raunchy requests from fans asking her to strip down in the kitchen. The uh, Here's your quote. The dream of most of my fans is for me to cook a meal in a sexy way. Uh, she's a personal chef who recently appeared on Hell's Kitchen Portugal. We all watch that yeah, one. Yeah, I love that program. Uh, the brunette cook has also appeared on the pages of Playboy Grease. She's very international. So that's Greece, the country, or G R E A S A? <laughs> She's making butter burgers. Doodle right? Donald. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And anyway, she has 44,000 followers on Instagram where she shows off both her curves and her culinary skills. Uh, one, of her <laughs> one of her signature dishes is uh, her famous. Brazilian hair pie. <laughs> oh, no. no. I'm so sorry. Yuck. I'm sorry. That's it, Pony. Hit the thing. We got to <clears throat> take a break. I, uh, I had to put it in there. Mm, I want I seconds. To, I, I tested that one on my wife to see if I get it. Oh, that's gross. She laughed. So there you go. I couldn't do that anymore. Uh, here. Abundanza. Bon appetit. Uh, we'll take a break. Uh, 
I'll see you uh, guys you tomorrow. Leaving? Oh, yes. bye. Bye. Love see you, you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll, see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, we'll be right back, everybody. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. Hot dog. Sonny was a great quarterback. Accustomed to I, getting I, his way. <laughs> a man who probably had permanent damage done to his ass because of the amount of kissing for it's his true. entire life. Excuse me, Mr. Jorgensen. Uh, my name is Rob Spiewak, and he holds up his hand like Caesar. He says, I know who you are. <laughs> he waves to me, but he never takes the plum out of his mouth. Getting kind of crowded in here, Jim. Getting kind of crowded. Hot dog. If there was a podcast hall of fame, the Mike O'Mara bonus show would be the first inductee. It's what keeps the daily TMOS episodes coming to your device every day. Order a bonus show subscription today at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Hot dog. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. With how much we rely on our devices, it's easy to forget about the hardware that we're born with. Like our ears. Can you hear me? Ears. Mm. I whisper. Ears. ears. Just like fingerprints, mm-hmm. no two are exactly alike. That's why your earbuds probably cause you some discomfort or maybe even physical pain after a while. Ultimate Ears fits true wireless custom fit earbuds from Ultimate Ears are here to change all that. You get a guaranteed perfect fit in 60 seconds. They stay put and they feel great. Ultimate Ears fits actually physically mold your ear for a perfect fit. Just put them in, connect to the app, and watch the purple LEDs transform the earbuds to your own shape. You can play and pause music and answer calls with the built-in controls and so much more. If you try fits and you don't love them as much as we do, no worries. Ultimate Ears offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, plus free shipping, free returns, and a one-year warranty. Use promo code TMOS at UE.com slash fits to get your own pair of UE fits. Remember that. That's UE.com slash fits, promo code TMOS. Oh, we only have time for a really short break here, and I wanted to pick your brain yes. regarding this uh, Netflix situation. Netflix calculated error, stock plunges. Yeah. They're raising yeah. rates. Yeah. Not a not 30%. a cool situation. Bouncing down today a little bit. You you do deep dives on this kind of stuff. Where well, where are we um, with that? The issue with Netflix is, and 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 this is not um, an original thought. It's j- enough talking heads of, and, and maybe this is. I have to give credit where credit's due. Hey, I'm Kramer. Uh, on <laughs> on his his morning show, I think it's at 9 a.m., um, which I tape and I watch it when I get home, along with the nightly news. He mentioned that you saw this uh, early on in the streaming days, and we used to kill Hulu for this, that the fact that they would have ads and subscriptions. Yes. And Netflix and their CEO, which, by the way, has... You know, I think about Netflix where it was where the delivery DVD service. Remember that back in the day? I was thinking about that when I uh, was reading about it the other yeah. day. That back in the day when you were Netflix was a delivery of DVDs. That's how it started. It, Hard to believe that long ago. Their founder, Reed Hoffman, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. he he saw the future. He was the oracle. He took what was going to be a company that was going to be devoured by Blockbuster at one point, if you remember that name. Um, to to heights that no one ever saw. And then you had the Hulus of the world come in and Amazon Prime say, oh, this is viable. Um, where they misstepped, Mike, is they saturated the market. They they put their flag in down and said, we're never going to have ads. That's not what they're going to do. And what they should have done in order to get ahead of the situation that we're in now where people inflation is going up, people are cutting subscriptions that they're like, eh, maybe I don't need this or cutting down is two pronged. One is they should have given us an ad based option that would be less money, but they would create more revenue for their uh, overall company because some people would pay for premium. And then the other side is this, and this is, look, I can't, this is not a small business. So you have opportunities to game this out is how many people share passwords. And by 2023, this is a, a global note to the Santana family and, of course, everyone else listening right now, that the days of your mother-in-law, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your girlfriend using your Netflix password, they're numbered. Because mm-hmm. they're, they're cracking down. They're gonna, it, right? It's not even – they've already have a pipeline of software that's going to figure it out. Yeah. Which they should. Yes. Which they should. Yes. So you think it's going to bounce back? It'll bounce not, back in I the think, long run. I think the platform's too yeah. strong. Right? Yes, I think their technology is too 
uh, superior to everybody else out there. By the way, you watch some other streaming services and you compare it to Netflix, it's the gold standard as far as the way they deliver content yeah. and the way you can play content on the well, platform. I think you the, know? The, the real opportunity here, uh, as I told my wife in the car this morning, uh, I said, hey, like, how much do you have? And we have like a little broke account that I'm just trying to teach her more about this because she's seems interested. I said, just buy, buy a handful. Uh, so... Disney, so all of the streaming platforms have been crushed by or, or affected by this because of the bad Netflix news. But Disney, who technically, if you if you purchased today or yesterday, um, and again, I'm no stockbroker, get ready to lose your money. Uh, but if the logic is is sound, Disney's more than their Disney Plus, and they're more than ESPN Plus. Um, they are theme parks. They're, you're going there in a little while. I know we rail on them all the time, but they're beyond just streaming. So if you can oh, you get had into, to remind me, if oh, you can God. get into Disney at the price point now, you're technically getting the streaming for free for the future. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, that's good. That's so, it. That's a good thing. As far as TV, though, uh, Better Call Saul, uh, another show with Josh Brolin called Outer Range, and that thing about Pam uh, with uh, Renee Zellweger. You know, settle, settle, settle. As far as Better Call Saul, a, a solid program I, that I'd love for you to get moving. Move the plot the along. thing about please. Pam, yeah. I watched it. Yeah. Hilarious. It should is have hilarious. It should have been a comedy. Hilarious. Shh. But boy, oh boy, what an evil lady. Oh, my God. Holy and then lady. Yes. I watched The Batman last night, which uh, is now Batman, on HBO I Go. Uh, I hear it's dark. Very dark. No, it's I've never wanted Christopher Nolan more in my life, not just sexually, but creatively. Like he, really? he, he literally, this, what we have here, and this is no disrespect because I know Rob liked the movie because it was more like a Dick Tracy, uh, mm -hmm. investigate, like invest, F Sin City kind of thing, maybe. I, I don't even, it's so slow. And as my wife said to when me, when I heard about it, I said, this is the worst. She said, well, just give it some time. I gave it some time. It's three hours long. It's oh for, my God! For a cartoon. It's, it's, well, I'm a Batman, Mark. I should love this. I know, I know, but everybody's panning it. Everybody says it sucks. So now, now I, I know be why. Burdening myself with mm. that, but uh, if you want to see, uh, you know, Renee Zellweger, uh, I think we're in a pretty big fat suit, right? I think the the uh, thing about Pam, right? It looks like Jimmy. What did Jiminy Glick? Jiminy Glick. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, a little over the top, but uh, <laughs> man, oh man, I, I, I never want to live in Missouri. When she grabs uh, that you know. pen, Mike, no spoilers. Yes, oh, uh, it's terrifying. Uh, but anywho, uh, yeah, we, we, we bought, bit off a chunk, and I think I know what you're talking about, because of course I skipped ahead. Uh, we'll take a break, and uh, we will come back with more fun and more thrills. You're listening to The Mike O'Mara Show. Whoa, whoa. The thing about Pam... Oh, she's a murderer. Thank you. Hey, bro. It's me, California Twin. What are you doing here? When I'm not paying $47 for a gallon of gas, I get all of my Twitch needs from the Mike O'Mara Shopping Center. Click the banner at MikeOmaraShow.com and have your essentials delivered to the East Coast or the Best Coast or anywhere in between. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Freshly Everybody. Freshly, freshly, freshly. Food that's fast. It doesn't have to be fast food. Freshly offers quality meals without the hard work. Their meals are designed by nutritionists, cooked by chefs, then delivered fresh to your door. Other meal deliveries need to be prepped. They need to be cooked. But Freshly is ready to eat in just three minutes. No one wants to spend an hour cooking dinner after a rough day at work or an infuriating commute. So skip the grocery shopping and please skip those dirty dishes. Your Freshly meals arrive cooked and fresh every week. Use the Freshly website or app to find meals that fit your lifestyle with plans that work for your dietary needs, preferences, tastes, and family size. I love that they are delivered fresh, not frozen, and always delicious. The steak peppercorn is amazing. Oscar love lives it. on it. Love it, love uh, it, love it. Listen, uh, I think that uh, Freshly has been with us a long time because people are supporting them. Keep doing that. Stop stressing about dinner. Right now, Freshly is offering our listeners $125 off your first five orders when you go to Freshly.com slash TMOS. That's right. You heard me. $125 off. Freshly.com slash TMOS. Uh, I don't know if I updated you about the Omera pet situation, but... Uh, I have already, 
Did I mention to you that I'm actually, uh, I was planning on taking the snake to the veterinarian? No. Because I was that concerned. What happened? Uh, in a land long ago, far, far away, I told you about giving the- uh, Didn't you wash the, him with the, Windex? Uh, the, I did not. I'm, I'm treating that pet very, very okay. well. The Jake the snake. I uh, gave him a too large rat, and he uh, ingested and regurgitated it, and that he slowed down after that, and uh, then he went through a shed- where he sheds his skin, and yes, it sounds gross for non-snake people, but I believe he has completed his full shed, and I think he's doing a lot better. I had him out last night, and he was so active oh. and rambunctious that I told Mrs. O'Mara this morning to cancel the vet, and after this show, well, after I work out today, I will be picking up one more mouse to uh to try to guy. see if he'll he'll yeah. eat uh the circle of life very very cruel uh but uh, we will see what ha- it's not cruel it's kind of the way it's what they eat yes uh the thing that is the miracle to me oscar is that this is a creature that i have esteem for i never thought it would happen but it just goes to show that all of god's creatures oh, should be yeah. loved because uh i like the snake I look at him and say, you, I'm talking to him. I yeah. say, you feeling better? Are you feeling better right now? But I didn't want, I like him, but I don't like him so much that if I thought maybe he doesn't really need to go to the vet, I won't cancel a vet's well, that's appointment. Your, that's your cheap chip. Um, and I respect yes. it. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. you, but you have to, you have to weigh the pros and cons of this. How, how busy is this vet? I have no idea. It's a new vet. It's not the okay. one we take our dogs to because it. it's a specialty vet. Uh, but I just felt as though there was such a difference in the way yeah. he was responding and the way he was moving. I don't think you have to over-calculate. I just, if you see any other signs, it's probably best you go back. If he doesn't eat the mouse uh, sometime today, yeah. uh, it'll be back to the vet. I'll reschedule the uh, vet's appointment and we'll, we'll see about. Yeah. Someone told me in the May, pet maybe store. Maybe you scared him straight with the rat. The person in the pet store who's a little odd, uh, but the, this person <laughs> is my... Well, this guy's my go-to. This guy's my go-to yeah. as it. Well, sometimes when they eat a larger thing and regurgitate, they can get a respiratory infection. Do you see him opening his mouth? Well, I said, no, I didn't. I still haven't mm-hmm. seen that, so I take him. And then as far as the other two be- uh, pets that we have that are walked five, six, seven times a day, still would like to thank both of them, not one of them, both of them for peeing on our marital bed yesterday. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, Carla goes in la- late night. We're done watching uh, that thing about Pam, and I hear, oh, my God. And it was Frankie oh, no. who's getting a little long in the tooth, and Frankie peed on the bed. And then this morning, Winslow smelled where Frankie, yeah. uh, and, you know, the key, keep them out of the marital bedroom yeah. altogether. Carla doesn't want to do that. I kind of don't want to do that either. They're but pack that's, animals. Uh, that's they the, need that's the little the, pack to sleep with. That's the pet. What about a doggy uh, door? Uh, doggy doors doesn't uh, you don't worry. You got to walk them because there are five thousand old people down here, so they always have to be on a what leash. A- One time, even with Frankie, a, t- a Chihuahua that weighs about two pounds, uh, I left the door open, and another lady was walking her like uh, her little French bulldog, mm-hmm. and Frankie was like, ah, 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 it just goes mm-hmm. out and goes into full attack. That's mode, the so. Manassas in him. Anyway, does Santos <laughs> ever pee on anything in your house? At all? I don't mean to be an a-hole when I say this. Yes? Never. Really? Never. Really? Because you've trained him well? Well, or, a- active. Yeah. We're, at, we're active. Um, You're, yeah, well, it's your only child. Yeah. That's, I mean, he he, I mean, that's the he way goes and he rings the bell at the door. And when he rings the bell, we, and we just let him out. And then when he comes back, he rings the bell from the outside and we let him in. I'm probably going to get in trouble for what I'm going to tell you one last little mm-hmm. thing about last week. Please. Uh, actually, last weekend. So we get the mouse, and we've gone through like two mi- mice with uh, with Jake that yeah. he hasn't eaten. And unfortunately, when you put them in the enclosure after a certain time, they expire. It's, it's curtains. A drag. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like you feel like you've wasted. The circle of so life weird. didn't. Oh, look, look, PETA people, I'm sorry if it's I'm a, not versed in this. Michael, the other day, uh, over the weekend, he doesn't take the mouse again. Mm. And I'm like, well, he's not going to eat it this time, I think, buddy. He's not going to. Dad, can we uh, can we let it go free? Yeah, you set it free in the field. I let it. I, I set it free. You should. I, I set it free. Well, I mean, but it's like an albino, red-eyed little mouse. Yeah, but that's give not him a chance. Survive in the wild. Well, he wasn't there in the front yeah. yard. The, next the Hunger day. Games, at least. <laughs> the critters, <laughs> right? the that, critters were there. That, better so. than just sitting there being like, "Well, I guess it's just the two of us. No one's hungry." 
I don't know. I'm just a 62-year-old father trying to make my way. I'm trying to do the best thing I can. I don't know what the hell's going on. You technically uh, saved the state. I mean, by fate, he's I got another it. shot. Uh, you know, he won there. You know, I'm thinking he's like Stuart Little, you know, setting up camp somewhere, avoiding the Ospreys. Uh, we'll take a break and uh, come back with Sound Town right here on the Michael Barrett Show every morning. Open up the audio vault uh, for today. Take it away, Rob. Who is the captain now? Oh, dear. Digital. Oh, no. <laughs> Dumpster. Digital. Fun is the best thing to have. Dumpster. The Digital Dumpster. Audio oddities and digital diversions. Don't miss the Digital Dumpster every day on the Mike O'Mara Show. So metal. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. Brought to you by Sunday. If you haven't heard about Sunday on this show, I'm going to tell you right now because it's good news. Warm temps are right around the corner. And if you want soft grass under your feet, you will need your lawn back. Sunday gets your grass growing and keeps it healthy all season long. Their custom plans include fertilizer and everything you need to easily care for your lawn. And with ingredients like seaweed, iron, and molasses. I always love that. You can feel good with kids and pets being around. All you have to do is visit GetSunday.com. Put in your address, and their lawn analysis tool does the rest. They use soil and climate data to create a personal nutrient plan. It's delivered to your door. They use photographs. You get what you need when you need it. Just attach the ready-to-use pouch to a garden hose and spray. That's it. Less than 15 minutes. Best of all, the stuff really works. I've used it. I know. Sunday can help you grow a beautiful lawn without the guesswork or the nasty chemicals. And Sunday is offering our listeners 20% off. Full season plans start at just $129, and you can get 20% off at checkout when you visit GetSunday.com slash TMOS. That's 20% off your custom plan at GetSunday.com slash TMOS. What a sound. Did you hear that? Make some noise. Sound Town. <laughs> sound Town is here, ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, well, uh, this, is, this is a bride. And a, a bride, at, well, I'll let it speak for itself. Uh, this is the, it was probably, I think, two or three days ago where this story hit. And the best way I can describe it is, I think they were trying to be funny, or maybe they weren't. I have no idea. But the bride and maybe the groom is involved in this as well. They spiked some of the food at the wedding with weed. Mm. And uh, this is a call to 911 from one of the guests who uh, was a little freaked out because they didn't tell anybody. Duh. Are you a pothead, Falker? Take a listen to this. I feel weird. I, 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 I feel like there's some kind of drugs in me or something, and I don't know what's happening. Do you know what you took or what you ate? I, I ate the food that was here, and I feel like I need some kind of medical attention, please. I feel very violated. I know a lot of people do, and it's just not okay. We were all like distorted and the very first assumption that people were chattering about is like, are we high? Are we stoned? Did we get drugged? The ambulance and fire truck showed up. There was a young man being checked out by an EMT, getting his heart rate checked. I remember at one point shooting a text to myself, I'm at a wedding. I think I've been drugged. I hope I'm okay. Not knowing if I was going to make it through the night. I want an explanation. I want an answer. I want to know why. It just wasn't an okay thing to do uh it, you know misguided i mean it's how many scary. it's wrong on so many levels so it's the text to right? yourself i mean should yeah. you be texting a friend for help <laughs> it seems like maybe not she was person, high not the person that's in despair well we seem to have a little theme uh going on today sound time with drugs uh there's a sheriff in florida uh and he's talking about uh a big meth bust and uh this is odd but I get it. If you're in law enforcement, this is a uh, meth bust that uh, the sheriff actually had his own daughter arrested. Oh, no. And they did this. Uh, you can hear the pain in this uh, sheriff's voice. Our narcotics guys have been working a case. One arrest, another person who was involved who happened to be my daughter. We did a, a controlled buy with my daughter, and she delivered over two ounces. That's when she was arrested. You think I like seeing my child and an orange jumpsuit back in a jail cell. Of course not. Boy, I this mean, what do you do? What do you do, right? Straight to the top, the new DA, because if you're willing to take your daughter in, yeah. you're willing 
to live by the letter of the law. doesn't matter who it is. You know, it's interesting. Both my daughters, I said, uh, you know, when you're involved in that, uh, you know, I will drive you. I will, if I become yeah. aware of something, I will drive you to the police department because it really can ruin your life quicker than anything else. I mean, Agreed. all you have to do is look at the opioid uh, crisis. Nicholas Cage is, uh, he's made so many movies. He's had his financial issues. He's uh, an odd guy, but I like a lot of his work. And I think that there are cool moments for Nicolas Cage. He's on Kimmel, and he's talking about going to, uh, in Las Vegas, obviously, gambling and then giving it away to an orphanage. This is, uh, I just like Nicolas Cage, and he's not interviewed that often. So when you hear him on one of these talk shows, he uh, he sounds kind of cool. I went to the roulette table. And I just knew I had it in every number I chose. And I often would choose the same number. It kept winning. And then the, even the woman that was spinning the ball said, nothing sweeter than a repeater. And I kept <laughs> winning. And I said, this is magic. I did it. It happened. And so the next day I said, you know, this is so special. I'm going to go. I found an orphanage. And I said to the headmistress, this is for you. For $20,000 cash in her hand. And I never gambled again because it would ruin the magic of that night. Never gambled Ooh. again. That is special. Cool. Isn't that a great that story? That is so cool. A good story. We go to a good from the good to the bad. Uh, the Johnny Depp trial happening in mm. your backyard mm. in Washington, D.C. Uh, Let's get in line, Pony. 4 a.m. <laughs> Carla no. was funny with me last night. <laughs> Nothing says uh, you're not a creep more than uh, wearing your jewelry <laughs> and having your devil's goatee beard and having your greasy hair slicked back. Uh, this is Johnny Depp, the first quote. We've got a bunch of them today. Fairfax, Virginia, people. Fairfax, Virginia, this is going on, uh, saying that Amber has a need for violence. Uh, take it away, Johnny. Miss Heard, in her frustration and in her rage and her anger, she would strike out. It could begin with a slap. It could begin with a, a shove. It could begin with, you know, throwing a TV um, remote at uh, my head. And um, these uh, day-to-day -day um, arguments uh, were um, simply unnecessary. Okay. Uh, so there's, a, um, uh, there's a theme. Um, First, yes. there's a lot of questions of why in Fairfax, Virginia, of all places. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the suit is uh, at its root regards an article, or I'm sorry, a story that was posted, uh, that was published in the Washington Post which was run out of Virginia. So that's why they ended up in Fairfax, Virginia. Um, so they're in Fairfax, Virginia, Don, Johnny Depp, and there are luminaries like Elon Musk and James Franco that are, coming to the and trial? All, that are getting all pulled in to testify. And what I think is fascinating that they're currently setting up a narrative, and I don't know what's true and what's not. You know this, Mike. Um, he probably has a great legal team, that he was the victim of an abusive relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, let me play this. Uh, yeah, he, he gets his fingers severed during one of their altercations. <laughs> she threw the large bottle and it made contact and shattered everywhere. And I felt heat and I felt as if something were dripping down my hand, you know. And then oh, I looked down and I was looking directly at my bones sticking out oh. and blood was just pouring out. And at that point, I think that I went into some sort of, I, I don't know what a nervous breakdown feels like, but that's probably the closest that I've ever been. I didn't, nothing made sense. And I knew in my mind and in my heart, um, this is not life. Um, no one should have to go through this. Um, uh, uh, um. Uh, you want to hear about the fecal matter in the bed? <laughs> yes, please. Uh, okay, sorry, it just keeps giving. She brought up the situation of the fecal matter on the bed. It was so outside. It was so bizarre. Um, so grotesque um, that I could only laugh. And, <laughs> and she just tr tried to blame it on the dogs. <laughs> They're teacup Yorkies. They, they weigh about... <laughs> four pounds each. I lived with those dogs for many years. Yes. It was clear that did not come from a dog. Mm. Oh, sorry, Johnny. Maybe the toddler that wow. I want to play you in the next clip did it. It was this toddler, Johnny. That's who left the fecal matter in the bed. Are you? What are you doing? Are you hiding from mommy? Why are you hiding from mommy? Because I'm, I'm hiding. Ah, you did something? Yes. What? 
I did that. I did the book. <laughs> Let's go change. Okay. Next time, don't poop there. Where do you want to poop? Party. Okay. Uh, yeah, Aww. pooped in Johnny Depp's bed. You little thing. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. And then I saw the toddler leaving the room, and I, I couldn't. Um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 all right. He uh, are you familiar? Well. Are you familiar with the uh, the comic known as Geechee Guy? Have you ever heard I don't of Geechee know. Guy? No, I don't know. No, I, just, uh, I'm ashamed I don't know I don't either. Know. I just know this is uh, one liners and. Uh, you know, maybe kind of. I've still got Gilbert Gottfried on the brain. I love, I love comedians to just tell jokes. I, I could go to any show where they do that. These are uh, uh, the comedian's name is Geechee Guy. I love playing comedians now when I'm doing this sound town. Geechee Guy with a bunch of one liners. Listen up, everybody. I got my girlfriend corrective eye surgery for Christmas, and then she dumped me. <laughs> I took a correspondence course in mime. They sent me six blank tapes. <laughs> I saw a sign that said, help wanted, so I ran in and said, what's wrong? <laughs> I'm going to sign an endorsement deal with Nike. They're going to give me a whole bunch of money. All I have to do is promise never to wear any of their stuff ever. <laughs> I haven't had a lot of luck with women lately. Yeah, lately, like it's a new problem. <laughs> Actually, I'm married and my wife is saving up to put me through hell. <laughs> We've been together 15 years and I haven't even so much as looked at another woman. I'm that discouraged. <laughs> How many women think all men are pigs? Let me see a show of Hooters. <laughs> I saw a sign that said, don't even think about parking here. So I parked there without even thinking about it. <laughs> I asked my wife if I could borrow some of her sleeping pills and she said, sure, knock yourself out. <laughs> the other day I found a golf ball the size of a hailstone. There you go. That's Geechee Guy, ladies and gentlemen. Now leaving sound. That's it. We got to get out of here. Again. Yes. Geechee Guy. I've never seen him. Uh, probably never will. Anyway, that's it. We got to get out of here. Thanks to Rob for joining us. Mm. We'll be back. Uh, bonus show drops tomorrow. We're going to be uh, all together, the whole gang, for the full hour uh, tomorrow. And uh, Rob, once again, I, I think we need to thank Rob for being Absolutely. so open about his situation. That was very thank you. enlightening on today's show. And uh, Pony, for you, make sure you upload the right show. Okay? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much. For Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana, and Pony Boy Matt Bloom, Michael Mara saying so long, every Palmer. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You're playing golf and you're going to like it. What about my asthma? I'll give you asthma. I see death.